One thing that I noticed is in two videos in the past two weeks, I have talked about Macbeth and how I see similarities between things in Macbeth and things in modern stories, namely Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about Macbeth and its massive influence on modern fiction, because it certainly goes well beyond the two examples that I've already discussed. In Shakespeare's play, Macbeth is told that he will be king until Burnham Wood marches on Dunsinane and that no man born of woman can kill him. And what ends up happening is that people cut branches from trees and use them kind of as cover as they're marching on the castle. And then Macbeth is killed by Macduff, who was born via C-section. There's something very similar going on in The Lord of the Rings, where the witch king of the Nazgul has been told that no man can kill him, and then he is killed by Eowyn, a woman, and she is assisted by Mary, who's a hobbit. So neither one of them is a human man. And then there's also a scene where the Ents, who are basically giant walking trees, decide to go to war against Soromon. So in that way, there's a forest that's literally marching against the enemy in battle. The other example that I gave recently was the idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy. In Macbeth, the prophecy that the witches make is what puts everything into motion. Macbeth most likely would not have ever taken the steps that he did in order to become king if the witches hadn't told him that he would become king. And what I compared that with was the prophecy about Harry and Voldemort in the Harry Potter books because the whole reason that Harry is the chosen one is because Voldemort went after his family when he was a baby. But the reason that Voldemort went after his family when he was a baby is because he heard the prophecy that Harry would be the chosen one. So in a very similar way to Macbeth, it sets everything in motion. There are other Macbeth references in Harry Potter as well. One that comes to mind is the song that they sing in the third movie, the frog choir in the Great Hall at the beginning when they're singing double double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. That comes directly from The Witches and Macbeth. Another very overt Macbeth reference that you might be aware of comes in the musical Hamilton. In the song Take a Break, Hamilton writes to Angelica Schuyler and he says, Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. I trust you'll understand the reference to another Scottish tragedy without my having to name the play. They think me Macbeth. Ambition is my folly. So it's a reference to Macbeth. He's quoting from Macbeth. Then he's referencing the superstition about not saying the name of the play, and then he's saying the name of the play anyway. And then he's drawing a parallel between himself and Macbeth. They think me Macbeth, ambition is my folly. Ambition was what brought Macbeth down as well, his determination to become king, even if that meant killing his way to the throne. Obviously, Hamilton doesn't take it quite that far, but it's drawing a parallel between what's going on in the present and how people are seeing him or portraying him and what happened in Macbeth. There are a ton of Shakespeare references in Star Trek, and I've got to make a video about that at some point, but this is not that video, so let's focus just on the ones to Macbeth. I was able to find two specifically, and these are not from episodes that I've seen, so I'm just kind of drawing on what I was able to find out about them, but the episode Cat's Paw apparently has three women who are meant to be witches, who show up out of the fog and start chanting and are very reminiscent of the three witches from Macbeth. And then the episode Dagger of the Mind, the title is a clear allusion to Macbeth. Shakespeare references as titles are a pretty common thing in Star Trek and in other places. In fact, there's also an Agatha Christie novel with a title that's a reference to Macbeth. The title is By the Pricking of My Thumbs, which again goes back to that song about double double toil and trouble. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. And then as far as other Agatha Christie novels where the plot actually has to do with Macbeth, there's Cat Among the Pigeons. Without giving too much away in terms of spoilers, there are two murderers in the story, and their motives are compared with those of Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. A student at the school where it takes place actually writes an essay about the two characters, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, and it's kind of linked thematically with what's going on with the murder mystery. I'm sure that there are a lot of other Macbeth references in modern fiction as well. If you're aware of any, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear about them. And if you liked this video and you would like to see more by me, feel free to subscribe. I post twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays.